AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT should cost $600 US. That's the price AMD announced on February 28th. But it doesn't. Two months later, this is not a $600 US graphics card. So I think it's time to apply the fake MSRP tag and explore what the real price of the 9070 XT is looking at a range of markets around the world. Now with graphics card launches, especially for popular well-received models, there's typically a period of time where it's hard to buy one. We've seen this countless times over the decades. Cards launch, they sell out, resupplies trickle in at higher prices, and eventually things settle back down to normal. So we have to give GPU makers a bit of leeway to steady the ship before sounding the alarm bells on fake pricing. As things stand today though, we're two months on from the launch of the RX 9070 XT, the GPU market is settling nicely in a lot of regions, and AMD has still been unable to offer the 9070 XT at the price they advertised, while cards around it have hit the MSRP, so let's explore this shortly. I'm excited to talk to you today about Opera One R2, the latest version of the browser that packs plenty of fresh functionality. Here's some of the stuff I love about Opera. If I've got loads of tabs open, Tab Islands is an intuitive way to group tabs and save space. And with the new Tab Traces feature, Opera automatically highlights recently used tabs so that they don't get lost. Split Screen is built into Opera itself now, so I can browse two pages simultaneously without relying on the OS. The new player provides music controls without interrupting my web browsing, plus it supports popular services I use like Spotify, it's super easy to use. There's a very impressive amount of browser customization options available through the themes feature so you can make Opera look exactly how you like. And of course, there's the latest AI functionality built in, including the ARIA command line, a quick way to ask questions without opening a new tab. From there, you can perform actions like image generation or even image recognition, which is a useful research tool built right into the browser. Opera One R2 is a feature-rich browser that we recommend, so to download Opera now and improve your internet experience, use the link in the description below. Thanks to Opera for sponsoring this portion of the video. So I want to start by briefly examining the US market, and I know that with current economic conditions in the US, tariffs and all that stuff, there is a lot of volatility in the PC component space. While countries outside the US have graphics cards at the MSRP, the US itself does not. I understand the reasons for that, and don't really expect GPUs to hit MSRPs while there is so much uncertainty. But despite this, it's still interesting to see how the 9070 XT is going. If we look at Newegg, the cheapest RX 9070 XT available right now is $860 US, an XFX Quicksilver model. The next cheapest model is the Sapphire Pulse at $880, with a couple of other models around $900. The direct competitor to this is the GeForce RTX 5070 Ti, which is actually cheaper right now. There's a Zotac Solid Core model available for $825, and then an MSI Ventus for $900. Both of these GPUs are well above their MSRPs, but the 9070 XT's price is especially egregious. Remember, the 9070 XT is supposed to be $600, and the 5070 Ti is supposed to be $750. So the AMD model should be $150 or 20% cheaper. But right now in the US, the 9070 XT is basically the same price as the 5070 Ti. When we look at the next tier down, you'll find AMD is also struggling to get the RX 9070 into a decent position, with the cheapest model on Newegg being the Sapphire Pulse at $750. But if you want an RTX 5070, there are three models available at $610 US, including the Gigabyte WinForce. Now, of course, this isn't the MSRP of the 5070. Both of these cards should be $550 US. But as things stand, Nvidia and their partners are doing a much better job of supplying cards at a price that more closely matches the MSRP. The 5070 is just 11% above where it should be, but the 9070 is a whopping 36% above where it should be. In Australia, the RX 9070 XT is very much an outlier. Most graphics cards are at the MSRP. We've got RTX 5070 Ti's in stock for $1,509 right now. The RTX 5070 is slightly below MSRP at $1,099. And even the RTX 5060 Ti 16GB is at its $819 MSRP, despite launching much more recently. You could argue that these MSRPs are inflated by the Australia tax or whatever and that they should be cheaper. I would certainly agree with that. The RTX 5070 should be more like $950 or $1,000. 
But the reality is that NVIDIA cards are available at the advertised Australian MSRP, or RRP as it's known here. There's also good news if you want to buy a Radeon RX 9070 non-XT model, as you can find those at $1,050. So in Australia right now, in this price range, you can get the 9070 for less than the 5070, even though both should have the same price. This is actually better than what we would expect in favor of AMD. But then we get to the pesky issue of the RX 9070 XT. The cheapest available model at PC Case Gear, the retailer we've been using for the other comparisons, is $1,300. That's a 24% price hike over the RX 9070, when the actual advertised price difference should be just 9%. Base models of this GPU should be $1,150 at most, if not below $1,100 when actually converting the US price to AUD. At $1,300, the 9070 XT is just $210 cheaper than the 5070 Ti, which is a 14% price saving, when the actual advertised launch price difference should be 20%. And this is relative to a really horrible local RRP for the 5070 Ti. The 9070 XT should be undercutting this model by more than 20% had it actually been available at a $600 US equivalent price. Let's move across to Germany, where the official MSRPs for the RTX 5070 Ti and RTX 5070 are 880 and 620 euros respectively. It's actually relatively easy to find models for below the MSRP at Mind Factory. For example, the Pallet Gaming Pro 5070 Ti is at 833 euros, and the Pallet Infinity 5070 is at 593 euros. Flick over to the RX 9070 XT, and the cheapest model available is 745 euros, which is about as cheap as I could find at other retailers. This makes it just 11% cheaper than the RTX 5070 Ti, when the actual margin should be 20%. The Radeon card should be priced at 640 euros if it were to actually be the equivalent of $600 US after tax, while the 5070 Ti should be about 800 euros. NVIDIA are getting pretty close to 800 euros right now, just 4% above that for the cheapest models, whereas AMD are sitting 16% above where they should be. And for the RX 9070, they're available for 650 euros, which is also overpriced. They should be the same price as the RTX 5070, but are at least 50 euros more expensive. On top of this, the gap between the 9070 XT and 9070 is larger than it should be, which makes the entire Radeon lineup less competitive when put against the nearest GeForce models. The 9070 XT, for example, should be just 9% more than an RTX 5070, but right now it's 26% more. Lastly, a quick check of Newegg Canada. Right now you can get the RTX 5070 Ti for $1250 and the RTX 5070 for $820. The cheapest RX 9070 XT is $1100 Canadian, just a 12% discount compared to the RTX 5070 Ti and it's 34% more than the RTX 5070. So in the real world, the price difference is very similar to what we see in Germany, if not worse. Again, you could argue all of these cards are inflated above what they should be in Canada, but it's the relative differences we're most interested in. So in summary, as we sit here two months after the release of these graphics cards, the RX 9070 XT is not as cheap as it should be. In several regions, NVIDIA graphics cards are at or below the MSRP, while 9000 series equivalents are still above MSRP. The price AMD advertised, $600, relative to the RTX 5070 Ti, $750, suggested a 20% saving when purchasing the Radeon model, but in reality that gap has shrunk to just 12%, or thereabouts, in key regions. This has also made the 9070 XT more expensive relative to the RTX 5070, sometimes considerably so. Now, I'm not saying here that NVIDIA graphics card prices are good in most regions. I still think many of the regional MSRPs they list are too high compared to the US MSRP that receives the most fanfare around launch. But it's undeniable that NVIDIA are doing a better job of enabling MSRP level pricing at the moment as supply begins to stabilize. Considering all of these factors, right now the real price of the RX 9070 XT is effectively $650 to $680 when matched up with other US MSRPs. 
The $600 price point is not a reality outside of a very limited batch of cards released on launch date, which benefited from AMD's rebates to hit that price. Once those rebates expired, prices increased, and while the 9070 XT isn't currently as expensive as it has been, most gamers just haven't been able to purchase one at the MSRP because they haven't been available at those prices. That's poor given they launched more than two months ago. And this really affects the value proposition of the 9070 XT. When Steve compared this GPU to the 5070 Ti in 55 games, he found it was 5% slower at 1440p and 4K on average. As things sit right now, the 9070 XT is about 12% cheaper for a 5% slower GPU, making it just 9% better value. At the MSRP, it should be more like 16% better value, which is what we felt was roughly the minimum difference where it makes sense to buy the Radeon card over the GeForce card. When the 9070 XT is offering less than 10% better value in gaming performance, you may as well just buy the GeForce model, in this case the 5070 Ti, and gain access to Nvidia's superior features. AMD was also able to benefit in the first month of the launch because they simply had far more supply of the 9070 XT, and by all accounts the card sold really well. But Nvidia have been able to ramp up production to a level where 5070 Ti's and 5070's are becoming increasingly plentiful, and many regions have these cards in stock at the MSRP. In this sort of market, AMD need to compete at the MSRP, not at an inflated price that assumes you can't get the GeForce equivalent. In my opinion, and to be clear this is just my opinion, it doesn't look like AMD really wanted to sell the RX 9070 XT at $600 US. All signs before launch were pointing to a higher price point, which they changed at the last minute, even replacing audio in their launch video. Did they actually want to sell this GPU at $650 or more from the start and are essentially just doing this now, advertised price be damned? I'm not really sure but all I know is the $600 price is more fake than it is real. With GeForce Supply now in a much better position, I'm hopeful this will kick off some real competition in the upper mid-range, and fingers crossed we see prices come down across the board. I also really feel for everyone over in the US who is stuck with a much more volatile and expensive GPU market. For example, here in Australia, we can go pick up 5070 Ti's for the MSRP right now. In the US, it's much more difficult. So hopefully things settle a bit so PC gaming can remain viable for those of you in the US. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this sort of little update at the 9070 XT and where the pricing is at right now. We always like to update these things as we think things should be settled by this point. Two months after launch is a great place to come back and check out pricing. So yeah, that's that's where things stand at the moment. AMD needs to make their GPUs a bit better priced. And obviously we have new AMD GPUs coming up very shortly. So hopefully when they launch and or at least announce prices for those products, that they actually hit those prices sooner than two months after launch. Anyway. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you want to support Hardware Unboxed and the independent testing and analysis we do, consider supporting us via Patreon. Links to that is in the description below. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.